you're looking at one of the smallest Skodas you can buy. It's the Skoda Fabia Monte Carlo edition. Now, what the hell is the word Monte Carlo doing on the side of a Skoda? Well, Monte Carlo is actually a reference to Skoda's famous racing history. So that's why they've made this edition because it's a celebration of Skoda's racing past. But here's the thing, this thing doesn't have a racy motor. And that's because it only comes with a 1.5 litre four cylinder motor producing 110 kilowatts, which is just under 150 horsepower. So it's not really a celebration of motorsport when you're driving around with this motor under the bonnet. Then what's the point of calling this a Monte Carlo edition? Well, it's got one really good purpose, and that's because it's a very good city car. And Monte Carlo is one of the worst places to actually drive a car unless you're competing in the F1 race. Now, we might not have the Monte Carlo sun, but we do have plenty of city streets here in Sydney, Australia. So I'm here to show you all the features that makes this little Skoda one of the best small hatchbacks you can buy. Now, this thing is priced from 38,990 drive away. So for that price, it feels more affordable against something like a Mini Cooper or maybe a BMW 1 Series in terms of a European practical and good looking small city hatchback. But if you want performance, you're probably better off spending that money on something like a Volkswagen Polo GTI. Now I'm gonna tell you what this car is like to live with here in a city. But first of all, we have to discuss what we get for that money. Well, first of all, we get this black grille up front. We get these LED lights, which look really quite nice and they're actually very bright as well. And I really do like the daytime running light. This is very simple, but looks good. Lots of black accents down below as well. And I also like this splitter down here, which has like an extra bit of trim sticking out, which makes the thing look a bit more aggressive. And of course we have our fog lamps down below here. We have 18 inch wheels. We have a Monte Carlo badge here. We get a black roof, black side mirrors, and we also get keyless entry and also start as well. And we also do get these black side skirts running all the way down here. I especially do love that black roof, but it is worth noting that this thing doesn't look as unique as it used to. The old Fabia was nice and boxy, and I actually really loved the look of that thing. But here, it's become a bit more mature and grown up, and everything's been smoothed out just a little bit. And at the back, you're getting LED taillights, but you are getting reflector-style indicators, which just sort of feels a little bit not as premium as the front. You're also getting a rear wiper. You get this little roof spoiler at the top, and you do get a pretty mean-looking diffuser. It probably doesn't diffuse all too much, but it does look very nice. And I like the fact that there's no ugly tailpipe sticking out the back, but I do miss the twin chrome tips you used to be able to get on the old Fabia. Now here in the back seat, you do have very solid doors in the back, but there's lots of scratchy plastic here. Now I'm a bit tight with my knee room, so that's this is me sitting behind my driving position. I have good feet room, good headroom, and I also do have a nice amount of support from these bolstered rear seats. They have like a carbon fiber weave into them as well, and they also do have this Monte Carlo stitching that runs through the middle, which looks really quite nice, and the headrests are very plush. Now you can sit someone in this middle seat, but they don't have any feet room because there's this little storage bucket with an adjustable uh, cup holder here and there's two USB-C ports and air vents in the back. Now you have these nice map pockets which also have a smaller pocket for something like your phone. I just love how clever Skodas are in terms of just throwing every small little practical feature at you. Although these side storage bins are just a bit small which is a common problem I have with modern day Skodas is that these storage bins are just very slim. Now the build quality in the Skoda Fabia is actually really impressive to me. I really love how heavy the doors are. It makes this thing feel very premium. Now you do have a start stop button here on the steering column and that just starts up just like that. Now we do have scratchy plastics everywhere, but what I do like is that Skoda's put all the nice materials on the places that you're touching the most, like these metal door handles up here, and we have nicely sort of trimmed door handles down below as well, and also very nice plush armrest, which is good for long trips. Now we also do have a nicely stitched sort of like rubber type material around the actual manual handbrake here, but it could be leather, but it does feel a bit rubbery. Now this also does have these bucket seats up front as well, which have Monte Carlo stitching and more that carbon fiber weave in them as well and they're very supportive because this is meant to be a celebration of Skoda's motorsport history. Now we've also got red everywhere, we also have red highlighting through the dash and again through the doors and we also have a little door bin, yes a bin, an actual bin in the door which is another Skoda thing. We have a little ticket holder up here on the dashboard, around the driver's cluster we have Fabia stamped into it, we have this nice texture material around the screen as well and I also do like the, the fact this virtual digital instrument cluster can be customized which I really quite like. 
like. So you can have like a more traditional look, you get a nice center rev gauge, or you can go for a more information-based driver's display. Now this screen here is very useful. It does have sort of like gesture controls, as you heard, just activate just then. But I mainly just use it for wireless Apple CarPlay and you can hook up Android Auto to it as well. But it has very useful readouts for things like your trip information, your tire uh, pressures, all that sort of stuff. And you can go through and just use this screen a bit more than say like a basic screen, which would just be for just phone mirroring. Now up here we have this carbon fiber weave on the dash and again, more textured plastic around the actual center screen here. And I like how you have actual buttons on either side for all your menus, even though they're all touch capacitive, at least you do have actual physical buttons to press. And then you've also got this large glove box here. We have physical climate controls, but then if you want to get more out of your climate controls, you press menu and it will take you to your climate menu in the screen, which I do like. So you have physical controls and also additional controls in the screen. And so here we have the new Fabia, but here's an old one to show you exactly what I mean. I mean, look how unique this thing looks as a boxy little hatchback. This one is an RS and this one specifically is the World Rally Championship Edition, but this is a bit similar to the old Monte Carlo. So you can see here it's got a black roof and it's also got that boxy shape, but it's also got those twin pipes down there. And while this Fabia generation was really quite cool, the new one does just look a lot more grown up by comparison. But now it's time to show you what it's like to live with this car and show you all the really useful features this thing has by driving it into the city where it really belongs. It doesn't belong out in the countryside with some review where you're driving on beautiful roads. This thing is going to spend 90% of its life in the inner city. So let's see if the Skoda Fabia Monte Carlo can bring a bit of Monte Carlo living to Sydney. But what you do have to remember is, especially if you've been driving cars with automatic handbrakes, is that yes, this has a manual handbrake. So I have found myself on a number of occasions wondering why I'm not going, and then I realize this has got an old school manual handbrake. And it's not normally that weird to me that it has a manual handbrake, but it's just a bit odd because it's an automatic with a manual handbrake versus a manual with a manual handbrake. That's what I'd expect. But yeah, most modern Volkswagen Group products do come with automatic handbrakes where this one doesn't. But for some people, that's a bit refreshing. Now get going here. What you notice is that it's just pretty smooth. Those larger 18 inch wheels do make a fair bit of tire noise, which you do notice a little bit. Now the suspension's nice and smooth on these like, you know, relatively smooth roads and even some small bumps don't really upset the ride at all. I like how quiet this cabin is as well. You can sort of have just like a normal conversation with someone. That engine is just purring away in the background. It's not making any big fusses whatsoever. But I do notice that at low speeds that this dual clutch transmission, it's the seven speed dual clutch, uh, it's just a little bit slow to take bite. So even just when you're moving along, it's, it's a gliding into gear. It doesn't really feel like it's snapping into gear or it's like a torque converter with a confident amount of engagement where you don't really feel like you're pressing the throttle. It's just revving and nothing's really happening. That's sort of what it feels like when you're doing, when you're driving this car. It sort of feels like you put the foot into the throttle, nothing really happens for a little bit and then all of a sudden it engages and that's sort of doing traditional dual clutch automatic things. So we're taking off from this standstill, for example, and yeah, we move off initially and then there's a bit of a sort of like slow down and then we sort of get moving in. So it can feel like a little bit jerky for some people who aren't used to driving a dual clutch. And I do think something like a torque converter automatic might work better in this daily driver focus little hatchback. If it was a hot hatch, I'd be saying different. I'd say keep the dual clutch, even though it's a bit uncomfortable at low speeds, but we don't have any paddles here as well to change gears. We can only change gears with the giant shifter here. So, and we don't really have enough power under the hood to be able to exploit this like a little hot hatch. Now zero to hundred takes around eight seconds, according to Skoda. And that's not too bad. It doesn't feel like it's too slow either. So it does feel like it can move along pretty well, even though it has 250 newton meters of torque enough to get going. Now I've been averaging around 7.3 liters per hundred kilometers driving this thing around day to day and that's pretty good. Like 7.3 for a little four cylinder it's not too bad for in city driving, but there's no hybridization here. There's no plug-in hybrid option for the Fabia. So that's the thing. If you want something that's even more fuel efficient because you're only driving it in the city, uh, yeah, you're not really going to find it with this thing. Now I do feel like I feel bumps a little bit more and I'm thinking it's due to these 18 inch wheels. They are pretty large. But now it's time to do our first bit of parking. And I can say that this reversing camera, even though the quality is pretty poor, it's pretty good to be able to pick up all the details you need. Although, yeah, if you need extra cameras, you're not gonna find it. it doesn't have a front facing camera or anything like that. It only has front and rear sensors. So you're gonna have to do a bit of due diligence to be able to check those wheels. Cause I can imagine those 18 inch wheels are very easy to curb considering how big they are for a car like this. 
Now, once you pick up your coffee, you have to know that this is the biggest coffee size you can buy to put in the cup holders here. They're tiny cup holders. So yeah, just make sure you go for the small option because your larger cups, or if you're used to ordering something like a Starbucks Frappuccino, probably won't fit in these cup holders. Now, I'm using the navigation in this car to test out to see how useful it really is because look, while Apple CarPlay is all nice to have, sometimes we want to use the inbuilt navigation that we actually paid for. So I've got to say that the Skoda Fabia has a really good turning circle, which is, again, plus points for this being a city-focused little hatchback. Now, what's cool is that the navigation does pop up in my instrument cluster here, so it's really easy for me just to keep my head up and just look at where I'm going as well, which is awesome. I just love this gauge cluster. It's so good, and it makes it, again, really friendly for a car that's meant to be navigating in a city where you don't really want to be too distracted looking somewhere else, so at least all your focus is here in front of you and obviously out of the windshield. Now going over speed bumps, you do have to slow down a bit for this car, like it's not gonna glide over them, but at the same time, it's still pretty comfortable. It doesn't really upset the ride all that much. And look, it's smooth enough for me to drink my coffee, which is scalding hot. Mm. Very good. And look, the ride's been pretty good that my coffee hasn't been spilling everywhere. And I do like the cup holder design, which means it's not sliding between the front cup holder and the rear cup holder, staying in its place up front. So yeah, that's a good thing to know when you're driving your city-focused little hatchback. Now the aircon blows really nice and cold in here. I found the air vent placement to be really good. So the, the weather's been all, all over the place for the couple of days I've had this thing. And I've just found it to be able to keep me warm when it needs to be, because you've got front heated seats and you've also got some nice big air vents that blow plenty of cool air when you need it to. Now there's no sunroof on this thing, which I think is a good thing because I don't really think uh, sunroofs are all that useful anyway. So I'm glad this didn't come with it and instead you got a nice black roof instead. And look, the speakers in here are actually pretty good for standard speakers as well. I don't think they sound too tinny and I've really enjoyed listening to music and podcasts on them and it's really easy to make phone calls here because you have all the controls you need for that here on your steering wheel. Like I really like the volume controls and also the media controls that you get here as well. And these seats are really comfortable. I I would like some like lower bolster support in my lower back. I think that would be quite nice, but we don't really get that. We just get some basic adjustment for these seats, but since they sort of support you really nicely laterally due to those big bolsters there, it's actually pretty comfortable. And now the auto start stops pretty good as well. Again, just means you're not running your engine 24 seven, which is good. So that means it can be nice and peaceful for when you're just doing some start stop driving. And what's really cool is that we have air care. So I'm about to hit a tunnel coming up here. And so that means if if I go into our menu here, I can hit air care, and that actually is a filter system, which means it will actively filter the cabin when you have all the windows up of any contaminants, which I think is quite brilliant. And I'm something that a lot of cars don't have outside of the Volkswagen group is what I found. So this is a really nice active air system, which means that like, you know, if you want to go into a tunnel and have nice clean air before you go in, or you know, you're driving on a bit of a smoggy day or it's smoky, at least you can have the windows up and you can activate that. And the car's filtration system will work specifically to clean clean your cabin. And Volkswagen says it's for fine dust and pollen particles, so it's gonna be good if you're susceptible to say a bit of hay fever. And what I also noticed that even though we have cheaper materials in here because this is a more affordable Skoda hatchback, there's no rattles in here, like at all. I was driving an Audi SQ7 and that had some rattles in it, I'll tell you that much. For $200,000, it was uh, yeah, a bit annoying. But in this thing, for $38,000, I mean, it's really quite well buttoned together. And I mean, you can go around here and start pulling out the cabin and all that, and it's a really well-built little car. Now, as we go from 60 to 80 kilometers an hour, let's test out the acceleration. And yeah, the little turbo turns on, and it goes pretty well. Now we have a little stalk here, which is for radar cruise control. So here in this tunnel, I don't really want to be speeding because there are speed cameras in here. So instead what I want to do is I want to activate cruise control and sit behind the car in front of me and I can adjust the distance and all that. And again, for a car that's sub 40 grand, very useful feature. And I like this one here because it works quite well. And so we can see here we're in seventh gear at, 80, at like 70 kilometers an hour actually. And we're sitting at really low revs. Our revs that we're sitting at is just above or just below 1500 RPM. So it's a really low stressed motor. It's not wheezing and it's not high in the rev range. And so for like long highway trips, if you're sitting at like 80 to 100 kilometers an hour, it's gonna be pretty comfortable. Now I'm cruising along here. I have plenty of space on either side of my car. I really do like the ride in here. I am just missing a bit of just like theater from this car. I just wish it had something a bit extra. This is called the Monte Carlo edition. It's meant to be a celebration motorsports. And as I'm cruising here, I really don't feel like I have much presence apart from the badges and the paintwork on this car. I just wish this had a little bit more flair to it. Even just chucking the GTI motor into this thing, which sounds like wishful thinking when I say it out loud. 
it just would be really cool to be able to see something a bit more special for something that's meant to be a celebration of Skoda's motorsport history. Now, obviously I understand there are limitations for doing that, but you know, a little exhaust here, or like, you know, a bit more of, like maybe some flappy paddles here up on the actual steering wheel, which I know Skoda makes because I've driven their sportier cars that do come with flappy paddles. But I guess if you're looking for a more of a refined car, which the new Fabia is compared to the old one, you're definitely finding something that's, yeah, something that's definitely grown up a bit, and so it's not gonna be as loud or obnoxious as the previous generation. It's trying to act a bit more grown up, a bit more mature. It's meant to be the sensible, option out of like you know the little hatchbacks you can buy you know doing it all with a bit more dignity so there's no twin exhaust pipes there's no big stickers on the side there's just some tasteful badging and look i i, I reckon it works it, it definitely works but if you're calling this monte carlo edition it's meant to be a celebration of motorsport history i just feel like it should be like a little bit more a motorsport in the Monte Carlo edition. I find it's a bit more fun to drive this thing in sport mode than it is in normal mode. And you do get a firmer steering feel as well, which just feels a bit more natural for what this car is trying to achieve. Now you have bag hooks here, 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 and also here, which is very useful for groceries. And say if this is a small piece that's floating around in the boot here, you can actually move this piece, which sits against the actual side of the boot here. You turn this dial and it will open up and you can expand it into a little cubby so you can put small pieces in just like that and they won't float around everywhere. And once you're done with this, it simply just slides back into place. They also have a little tether here to hold anything, which is quite useful. And you've got this little piece here, but I'm not entirely sure what this is meant to hold. And then underneath here, we do still have a spare tire. And this car's also got this extra bit of netting, which you can secure against here, which is very useful. And you've also got this handle up here, which just looks a bit suspicious, but it's again, designed to make it easy to close this boot. And so yeah, we're here in the inner city now and it was just so easy to drive this thing in here. And all this is, is just a taste of how easy this thing is to live with. It's just small, it's comfortable. The engine actually is pretty good despite this not really being a hot hatch. It still has enough power for the money. And I just think if you're chasing something that has a bit more character than a Volkswagen Polo and you don't want to spend as much on something like a Mini Cooper and you want something a bit more practical than a Fiat 500, well, the Skoda Fabia Monte Carlo edition is one of my favorite picks. Now, if you're worried about the fact that this is the European car. Well, it comes with a seven year warranty anyway. So it's one of the best warranties you can get full stop. Now make sure you write your own car review on productreview.com.au to let everyone know what it's like to own your car. If you want to see more car content, make sure you follow us at Product Review Cars on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Cameron and make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see more Skoda reviews just like this. I'll see you in the next one.